Good afternoon, my name is Effie Moss and I'm here today to ask for £50,000 for a 10% stake in my company, Just for Tiny People. Just for Tiny People was established 17 months ago and to date we've had the pleasure of handcrafting 800 magical teepees and 1,600 accessories. During our first year of business, we generated sales of £124,000. Every teepee that we've made has a bespoke element to it, whether that's a degree of personalisation, the fabric selected, or just a very, very excited parent. We now offer a range of products um, to help accessorise a child's bedroom, playroom, or even the living room. We want parents to feel that they are part of the process in creating a magical space for their child, and we want the child to have the perfect place for play. During the past 17 months, we've established a strong online collaborative community via Facebook, which has helped us to establish our brand. 70% of the sales generated are actually as a result of the collaboration through our Facebook community, and 30% is as a result of our online website, which was launched in August last year, and is actually primarily one of the areas where we'd like to use the investment. I'm also really pleased to be able to share with you that I have my very own set of dragons, five children um, who sit on my pretend board of directors aged three to nine, who are more than happy to tell me when something just isn't right, but unfortunately they haven't £50,000 to invest. Thank you so much. Could I come and have a look yeah, at them? Yeah, of course you can. Thank more you. than welcome. Bespoke teepees and accessories for children. An idea Effie Moss is hoping will capture the dragon's imagination. She's looking for £50,000 for 10% of her business. But Peter Jones has some doubts about the product's proportions. The age range that you're targeting, what is that? The magical teep can go up to age 11 and the midi teep is for smaller children age 1 to 4. So you go to 11? 11, yeah. Really? You haven't yeah. seen the size of my children. Yeah. But to be fair, with the magical teepee, you know, I sit in there with my daughter and that's one of the things that we advocate is that actually a parent could get in there as well. Really? You can get in there? Yeah, I can, honestly. I'm quite short when I've not got big heels on. Can so, you yeah. show me how... Do you want me to put my shoes on? In there? I just want to see what, what it is size-wise so yes, I can get an idea. Yeah, sure. Yeah. There. And it normally opens up and then Alice is here with me. OK. I can't get out now. Um, <laughs> thank you. Why don't you jump around? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Peter. <laughs> thank you. I don't know if I can do it as ladylike, unfortunately. Thank you so that was much. Very elegantly done. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you said that you're on Facebook. Yes. How many likes have you got? Sixty-two and a half thousand. Sixty-two and a half thousand. Yes. Wow. Okay, that's thrown me. Um, Eight hundred TPs. Yes. Generated sales. In the last year of 124,000? Yes. What margin would you make on that? Gross margin was £86,000. And what was your overall profit? The net profit was £48,000. And the company now, what does it have in its assets at the moment? Fabric, etc. we have about £10,000 of fabric. Um, the bank balance itself at the moment sits around um, £10,000. Um, I don't owe any money to anybody and everybody's paid to date. And your forecast, do you think that you're going to achieve this year? Well, the forecast for this year for sales was £300,000, and that was based on making around 40 teepees a month. The big teepees here that I call the magical teepees are £145, and the midi teepee, which is the smaller one, they're £100. We've actually smashed projection this year so far. Well done. Thank you. That's really good. Effie's impressive figures have provided a credible answer to Peter Jones' questions. But Kelly Hoppen wants to understand more about the market. Who is your biggest competition? We've got Cath Kids and might, you know, will sell a TP and, and they're slightly much lower price range. And we have Next as well. Um, I think we're different because, you know, people are allowed to actually choose from a set of fabrics. We have a set of designs that they can choose from. So I would go online and I would be able to see a whole range of fabrics. And then I, what, do I just slide them across or I click on them? and I can create my own design. I would, yeah, well, that's where I'd like to use the investment to get to that point. At the moment, it's a little bit more laborious. And what percentage of returns do you get? Um, I don't. Not at no, all? No, I've only ever had one return, and that was because the, the lady um, wanted the teepee to behave in a kind of pop-up type style, like a pop-up tent, but it's a teepee, it doesn't behave doesn't. in that way. So that was, that's my only one. Why do you need £50,000 of anybody's money? You seem to be doing absolutely fantastic. One of the areas is that 
we turned away um, last year for Christmas 482 orders because we couldn't fulfil them. Why was that? Because we just didn't have the processes or the sheer capacity to be able to deal with them. So my main focus this year was actually, rather than running at it and trying to generate more sales, was actually making sure I have the process behind it that I can scale. You know, I'm not putting on the poor ladies, my ladies at home who are trying to push things through a sewing machine, that I've got a proper sustainable process that I can use. And what's your biggest problem? A little part of me thinks, um, I was going to say knowledge. I, I always worry about whether, can I take it far enough? Can I identify all the opportunities that need to be made with, with it? Effie, you've done amazingly well. I mean, unbelievable. And you're almost faultless. It's a bit annoying, really. Thank you, Peter. But it, there is a big but for me, is the fact that could this be a million, two million, three million pound business? Could this be really mega successful? I, I'm not convinced that it could in terms of, because it's going to be a, the size of the market. But then you're going to turn around and say, knowing you, well, actually, I haven't even touched the international marketplace. No, I haven't. Is that what you're about to say? I'm about to say that, yeah. Yeah, I'm certain, <laughs> yeah. Damn. It seems the entrepreneur can't put a foot wrong in the den. Will Kelly Hoppen think the investment opportunity is as cute as Effie's teepees? When my kids were growing up, they always loved make-believe, and we used to sort of create tents and out of blankets and sheets and whatever, and... I watch my step-grandchildren now do it exactly the same. And I think the very fact that it's got this handcrafted element to it, I think it's got a lot of legs. Um, I'd like to make you an offer. Oh, thank you. Um, I'd like to offer you all the money, but I'd like 20% of the business. OK. OK, thank you very much. That's really lovely. Thank you. Effie, that is an effing good offer. Yes, I know. I'm going to run over and cuddle Kelly in a moment. See what I wrote down now? Sorry? What does it say? 50,000 to 25%. Well, for 50,000 for 25%. Yeah. And Kelly just goes on me. Kelly Hoppen tries to take the initiative and steal a lead on her rival investors with a highly competitive offer. Will Peter Jones try to match it or even better it? I don't know whether I'm getting sentimental in my old age or or anything else, but I'm feeling at the moment that I don't think I'd be the perfect investor for you. I, I feel that you've got an incredible offer and I don't know what's in the water, but I'm not going to compete with it today. Okay. I think, I think there are better dragons that will do a better job for you. So I'm going to say I'm out, but wish you the best of luck. In an unusual turn of events, Peter Jones has stepped aside to pave the way for a union between the entrepreneur and Kelly Hoppen. But Deborah Meaden doesn't appear to be as accommodating. If you sit and look at this and think, well, actually, I'm going to make TPs, then I'm going to say, honestly, you don't need me. Yes. Just carry on doing what you're doing and get bigger. If you want to create a lot of product around it, which turns just for tiny people into a destination for anybody who's looking for their gifts or their party stuff or their Christmas stuff, now that is much more interesting. I think I like the idea of that. I think with all the other things that we're starting to do and look at, I think it's becoming more than just a TV product. Right, well, I'm going to make you an offer. Um, so I'm going to offer you all of the money but I want 25% of the business. OK, thank you, Deborah. Thank you so much. So another offer, but one demanding a higher equity stake than that of Kelly Hoppen. Time for Piers Linney to make up his mind. I think you're brilliant. I can't make a better offer than other people have made. Uh, good luck with it, but I'm out. Um, well, I did break down offer £50,000 for 25%, but I'm actually happy to match Kelly's offer, um, £50,000 for 20%. And if Kelly wants, I'm happy to go halfers with Kelly, so you get two dragons for the price of one. No, I'd be happy to share it with, with Duncan, but I'd be equally happy to do it on my own. OK. Yeah, same here. I honestly didn't think I'd find myself in this situation, so thank you so much to all of you. That's 
really very kind. Um, <laughs> Um, I think what I'd like to do is probably go with Deborah. I think if that's okay, I would like to go with Deborah. I would be delighted. Yeah. Well Fantastic. Done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. 25%, I'll go get that. Surprise all round as Effie rejects the best price offer in favour of a partnership with Deborah Meaden. Thank you. Good pleasure. Well done. Well done. She leaves behind a den of rather bemused dragons. Well, well, well. Wow. Do you know what? I wasn't expecting that. No, I don't get that. Our offer was, was for a, a lower equity, and it was two dragons, so I just don't get it, that she thinks Deborah's better than me and Kelly added together. She clearly wanted Deborah, but I think, honestly, I'm well pissed off because I've got a really yeah. good one there. I went in there, and I didn't have a dragon in mind. Um, I chose Deborah because I felt that she understood what I was trying to do with the business. I just felt I had, you know, confidence in her vision. So I think I've made the right decision. <laughs>